All right then, so in the last video, we saw how we could react to a user clicking on this button by using this on click event right here. And then we set that equal to a function reference handle click that runs this function when the click occurs and it changes the belt color value to orange. And we can see that over here, if I click on this, it changes from black to orange, so that's cool. But what if I want to allow the user to type into an input and let them choose their own color. And as they type, it changes the value right here. Well, we could do that. So first of all, let's create this input of type text. I'm gonna save that. And what I'd like to do is when a user types in yellow, for example, then this updates to yellow as they are typing. So in essence, we need to dynamically change this on the fly every time a user types into this. So what we can do is react to an input event, much like we reacted to a click event right here. An input event is whenever a user types something in here. So that is an input event. That's an input event. A space is an input event. Anything that a user types in there is an input event. So to do that, I could say on and then input and set that equal to some kind of function as well. So let's call this one handle input. And by the way, we don't invoke these functions like this because that would invoke the function at runtime. It would look through the code and invoke it straight away. We're not doing that. We're passing through function references and that way they're only ever invoked when this event occurs. So let's now create that function. So I'm going to say const handle input. And by the way, you can call the functions whatever you want. You don't have to call them a handle click or handle input. Call them what you want. And I'm going to set this equal to an arrow function again. And inside this time, what I'd like to do is take whatever the value is of this input and assign it to this right here. So how do we get that value? Well, when something like this occurs, some kind of event, whether it be input or click, the function can automatically take the event parameter. Now we don't need it in this top one, so I'm going to delete it from here. But in this one, we are going to use the event parameter. And on this, we can access the target element. So where the event occurred and the target element would be this thing right here, the input. And on that, we can access the value property, which is what's actually in the input, the text that they have input to it. So I'm going to say const or rather belt color. We don't need another const belt color is equal to e dot target dot value. So events dot target, which is the input dot value, which is the value inside the input. So every time they input a letter, this is going to run and it's going to grab the current value and it's going to update belt color up here with that value. So it should update on the screen in real time right here. So if we save that and test it out, cross our fingers, currently it's black belt. And if I start to type in yellow, we can see it changing up here as I type, which is awesome. Okay, so that's cool. So now what we're doing is we're binding whatever the value is in here to this, but it's only one way binding at the minute. If it was to change up here, it wouldn't update down here. And I can demo that by clicking this because that changes it to orange, but it then doesn't reflect that change down here. So this is one way binding at the minute, but we can turn this into two way binding if we want to, so that whenever this changes, this updates to reflect that as well. So they're always in sync with each other. So to do that, we could come down here and we could use the value property and set it equal to whatever this thing is. Belt color right here. And then whenever this changes without us inputting anything, this value will be updated to reflect that. So if I save it and come back over here, we can see automatically that it's placed black inside here because we have that two way binding going on now because this is black and the value is set to this value. Now, if I change this to yellow, it still works. If I update the belt color here to orange, it updates here, but also because now the value of this input field is set to that variable, the belt color, now it updates in here as well. So that is two way binding in action. We have this binding where we're updating the variable based on what a user types in. And we have this binding backwards where we're setting the value equal to whatever this thing is right here, two ways. Now there is a shorthand way of doing this and I'm going to show you that. So if you want one way binding, you can just use either of these. If you want two way binding, you can use a shortcut 
and that is to say input and then this time it's going to be of type text but this time we'll say bind so this right here is a svelte keyword and we're going to bind the value of this input to the belt color that makes sense doesn't it and that does both of these things under the hood two-way binding so whenever we type into it it updates the value over here and if this changes elsewhere it's going to update the value of this input to reflect that so if i save that and come back over here we can see we still have black and black if i change this to red it's going to update in both places if i update the belt color to orange it updates in both places now in cases where you only need one way data binding definitely use this method either this or this but if you do need two-way data binding use this instead now as well as hooking up our data with inputs we can also hook it up with other attributes and other elements as well so for example i could come to the paragraph tag where we output the belt color and i could say that the style is equal to and the color is going to be something and i can output a dynamic value here and it's going to be the belt color so as this updates over here, it's going to also update in the style attribute as well. So if this is black, then the style is going to say color black, and it's going to color this text black. If it's orange, it's going to color the text orange and so forth. So if I save that and come over here, we can see this is black text. If I change this to red, then we get red text. If I change this to blue, blue text. And if we update it over here to orange, we get orange text.